Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, this is going to be a pretty cool video because we're going to look at this new infrared camera. It's, look at this jig that it's on. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I got this Class D amp. I want to bring it up to full power and I want to see if anything gets too hot. And a thermal camera is an awesome way to do it. Another way to do it, here, let me see. I have these probes over here. By the way, I've done this video, you know, multiple times. Had multiple technical difficulties. And uh, third time's a charm, right? No, nope, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, hopefully this one's going to work. So this is a temperature probe. That one you could imagine what you might want to use that one for. And it comes with the type K type inputs. This one does too, which has this probe, which is really neat. This is a fluke type probe. Well, it is a fluke probe. And uh, you just go down and touch a device. And, you know, now if you're trying to get a real small device, that might be hard to do. But that's kind of a neat way to do it. And, you know, then there's these uh, these little guys that you get with a lot of multimeters. Uh, maybe not a flute. <laughs> I think you got to buy them separate. Uh, but a lot of these other meters, I get these probes. So I've got lots of them. And, uh, you know, they come with banana jacks like that, your type K, if it has an adapter, unless the meter has that kind of a thing. And then also some of them come with just banana plugs like that, just loose ones. So they come in all kinds of different formats. And then I was looking for my Ericsson. Uh, I got to have a really nice IR gun, you know, kind of like the ones you use in the kitchen, maybe. It's kind of funny how you find them everywhere now. But, uh, well, and also I had this fluke. I've had this fluke for years, and this works well. You just point at things. Now, there's a lens that shoots a, a pointing device, and then there's a thermal pickup, and they kind of have this parallax there. So you have to be a certain distance so you can aim just right, and you get a certain diameter. And uh, this uh, X-Tech multimeter has a little IR button just like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, you find different ones. And, uh, you know, the FLIR multimeter, I my FLIR, I didn't buy the expensive one that has a FLIR camera, but I did buy this guy. And this HTI, it's a HT-A1. I really like this, it's an all-one piece. Now, this guy has a cam, you know, it works with my phone. This one's iOS, works with Apple's. So, now, the camera itself is a small little cube. I'm gonna pull it out in the video and show it to you. And it has this focusing ring. You're gonna see it because my finger gets in the way sometimes, but uh, that's really neat how you can get all like really close and focus and get really good focusing. So that's turned out great. So this little camera came with this little plastic adapter. You see this thing sticking out. That's just an adapter the camera sits inside. And then it has this cord that goes to your phone. Okay, I'm gonna show you another way to use it then in the video as well. And then this particular thing came with this pointing device, this IR thing, kind of like you might see on a handgun or a rifle or something. I mean, that's pretty crazy. It has, the, I think, the Pickney rails they talk about. So, uh, but I don't believe this, this was given to me by Per Gear, and I'm gonna put a link down below, and they have a sale going on right now. Uh, this guy here, I don't think is in that package. I think it's like an extra 30 bucks, which is, a pretty darn good price for what it is. Uh, but anyway, this guy here, we're gonna talk about the specs and the cost later. Uh, you can kind of see it sticking out of the unit, it's yellow. So it's a pretty neat camera. This guy pivots up and down. Uh, I'm trying to get it so it's straight on with my phone. Um, and this whole contraption, this guy holds my phone in, this guy holds the camera in, and then this red ring holds this contraption, you know, to this little pistol grip, okay? And yeah, so anyway, what I'm gonna, okay, what I already did, one of the earlier videos, which I think it worked out well, this part, is I took a bunch of thermal pictures, and what I did is I recorded 
my my phone recorded the image it was looking at so you'll see what I saw when I was doing this okay now you won't see my finger touching things so I'll kind of tell you when I'm touching things so what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch a video with me I hope so anyway and uh, if you watch this thing and I'm gonna place it right here okay and I'll just talk about what you're seeing and we're gonna take a really good look at this camera because it's a really great camera and the price is it's a really good price too I mean if you've looked at FLIR cameras this thing's this thing is really nice so let's just jump into this video okay so I did heat up this guy I ran it for a while and I took some videos so let me just start the camera and I'll talk about it okay all right so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing now by the way when you plug it in it automatically comes up and it starts the app so you don't have to go hunting on your phone for the app to turn it on to connect to the camera it just the camera automatically finds the app and it pops up and says hey you want to watch this thing so it's pretty neat okay so here's the video all right guys so here is the entire board and let me focus the camera i'm gonna stop it already um when i said focus i wasn't focused so when I was, I was holding the camera up like this and videotaping it, so I was about right here like this, uh, this part of the video, and then I kind of moved it around, okay? So that's kind of what I was doing, and let's go ahead and play it. Now, if I want to see the temperatures, I can go to this line. Like any thermal camera, you can take still pictures. This one, you can also do videos. I'm gonna show you that a little bit later. Now, what's neat about this one is on a lot of thermal cameras like this one, uh, there'll be a red and a blue dot and they'll run around the screen and the red one will find the hottest spot and it'll tell you the temperature right by the spot. Sometimes it's hard to see it because it's in the red part of the picture <laughs> and the blue one will run around and do the same thing for the cold spot. And, you know, so again, kind of hard to see because it's in the blue background. Where this one, oh, and then also there'll be like a, the center of the screen will be kind of like the aiming part and you can aim it at whatever you want to look at the temperature at and then it'll tell you up in the corner so it's easier to see. That's how that one works. Other ther thermal cameras work similar to that, okay? This one, you can sit here and you go up to the top screen where you see the line and the dots and the little box or the rectangle and you can click on one of those and like say the line, what I'm doing right now, and you, my finger I'm just drawing on the screen and then there'll be a red and blue dot that runs up and down that to find, to show you the hot spot, the cold spot. And then up in the corner or on the screen, it'll list, like in this case, L0 was the first line I drew and there's an L0 next to that line and then it gives you the highest and lowest and average temperature. So I'm gonna zoom in, show you that. And then L1, I drew a little short line. I just dragged my finger a little bit across the screen and then it shows those temperatures there too. So it shows the red and blue dot, what the temperatures are there and then the average. Okay, so that's what's going on. Then when I go to dots and rectangles, I'm just hitting the dot and then putting the dots on the screen with my finger or the rectangles or the boxes or whatever I call them and doing the same thing. You start one corner, drag it to the other corner so you can make squares or rectangles, okay? Okay, I'll go ahead and play the video again. That looks good. And I'm gonna use the box one again. Let's say, what's, what's the temperatures in that box? I'll put another box over here. Okay, and then maybe I'll put a line across here. Maybe I'll put a dot right here, just see what it is in that nice cold spot. And by the way, you can do combinations of boxes, lines, and dots. And I put a bunch on the screen at one different times. You can put more, in, I don't know if there's a limit, but the limit gets to where it's just too crowded. You can't really see what you're doing anymore. But notice this picture. You can see really good definition of the little small parts on the board up to the big parts. I mean, it's just pretty amazing picture, I think. The dots are different than the lines because there's only a single dot temperature. So it's just telling you the temperature of that dot. So you don't have the max min, right? Because, but the boxes and the lines you do. Look at that bad boy. Okay, let's focus this thing. 
Looked like it was looking pretty good, right? Okay, I'm gonna put a line across this thing. That's an amazing picture in there. And I'll draw in a little line right here. And maybe I really want to know what's on that chip. So I'll put a dot. Actually, that line is across it, but I'll, I'm going to readjust my camera to right about here. And I'll put a dot right there. I'm going to make sure it's focused the best I can get. That looks pretty good. Look, you can even see the pads and the legs on that chip down there. And that is... I think this is the nicest camera I've used. And you know, saying the nicest camera, that's saying something. Uh, now, it's been a while. It's probably been like, gosh, 20 years or something since I worked at, has it been that long? <laughs> since I went, worked at Square D. And when I was there, I talked the team into getting a thermal camera. And I think it was actually a Fleur camera. Fleur and its competitor, which was bought up by Fluke to compete with Fleur, the, you know, they were the two big competitors for FLIR cameras, for IR cameras back then. And I think it was like 20 grand that we paid for that camera. So I think that this blows me away. So I think this one's even better. So the reason we spent 20 grand is we're doing a lot of destructive testing and it's expensive. We get, build a lot of circuit boards and we just end up blowing a bunch of them up, burning them up, all kinds of stuff. So we wanted to see the heat. And we had traces on the board that would act like fuses that we designed that way. And we wanted to see how they behaved, you know, before that actually go catastrophic. I mean, back then, that was a lot of money. And, uh, you know, it was worth it to us because of what it did for us. These cameras are amazing at the price. And, I mean, yeah, just crazy. You see the color palette across the bottom? There's like six different color palettes, I think it is. But yeah, I'm just going across them. I keep having to hit that little palette at the corner, bottom right corner, to turn on that little palette that pops up and you, you can see it. I'm going to put the little finger on the screen, hopefully, so you can see where I'm touching. The bottom right corner over here, it just shows you your reset. It was processing. It was going to pull up a whole bunch of pictures, and I just didn't want to waste the time to show you all the pictures. Well, let's do a video. Okay, I'm doing a video right now, okay? So I, I, the video that I'm taking with the thermal camera, and put it here so it's going to change, and you're going to see just the image, okay? So let's just watch that. So it's counting right now. It's looking at the thing. We're going to go up and look at the resistors over here. Come down, look at the wires. Turn the camera. Kind of gets blinded by the heat. You can read the my. You can read my writing on the resistor. Go back. Yeah, this camera is pretty amazing. Okay, I'll stop recording. So that's cool. I mean, if you wanted to uh, do a video, or instead of just a bunch of pictures, you know, you could walk around and show somebody a video of whatever you're inspecting maybe maybe your house inspecting but if you're doing a video of this it's just kind of neat that you can move around and do a video instead of taking a whole bunch of snapshots again if you got a camera like this connected to your screen you can just have your your phone capture it but then you're going to capture that back the borders and all the other stuff where if you know, the camera's capturing it. It's just capturing an image. You don't have to see all that other stuff around there. Okay, now we're starting to end picture thing. This is where, if I line up the camera closer to uh, the IR camera, the in picture in picture would be showing more of what the center picture of this is. But And I'm just moving the image around, which is super cool how you can do that with this. Um, the reason you do that, obviously, maybe it's obvious, is if the thermal image is hard to kind of see where certain parts are or certain cable is or something like that, sometimes it's nice to look over at the picture and go, oh, that's, th okay, that thing right there is this thing. Uh, what I would do sometimes with other cameras that didn't have, real this thing has such great resolution, but I'd take a pen or a stick or something and point it into the image so I could point, I could go, okay, that's R1, 
and then I could point at R1 and say, yeah, there's R1 in the thermal. So then I could tell what I was looking at in the thermal camera. But this thing, the resolution is so darn good that... Man. Here's your languages. Yikes. Let's go back to English. Temperature settings. You got all your settings here. Um, so I can set all these corrections and I guess I can set distance. I don't even have the distance set. And... And by the way, those are just came default. I didn't set those up, so I, I haven't played around with them yet. I should do that. This camera is so easy to use, I just started using it. And uh, and I've done this video so many times, uh, by now I should be an expert on it, but I've been redoing the same thing over and over different in different ways and different days. I've been doing this for, embarrassingly, for weeks. So, yeah, can't wait to do this one. Because, uh, and that's why I'm videotaping the way I'm doing it right now, just to get this video done. But hopefully you like it. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, sorry. Like I said, I've done this video so many times. The camera just shut off. I don't know why it's been doing that. I, I, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, it's not overheating, I don't think, because it's cool in here. So, so I'm just kind of going through the settings at the bottom of the, of the camera. And... Yeah, I'm just kind of showing you that stuff, how you set those up. So this is a temperature setting uh, button that I hit, and or temperature range. And I think really what it is, um, I didn't, you know, that, as I was doing this, I was talking, I, I started thinking that I understood it. And what I think it is, is when I'm moving this around, and if I'm on one part of the board that's got something really hot, and something really cold it sets the range of temperatures across that right and so then when i move it where everything maybe is closer to the same temperature then it changes that it goes to maybe say 20 degrees and it stretches those out with the colors all the way across so you still get something white and you still get something blue uh even though the temperature is only 20 degrees apart i think what this is is you set the temperature range say i want to look from 10 degrees C to 100 degrees C. And then it sets a scale. So if something gets up to 100, it's going to turn white. And if something's cold down around, you know, the bottom of the scale, it'll be blue. And then in between, you'll have your different ranges. So you won't have as many ranges if you don't have things hot and that cold. You'll, maybe everything's going to be more orange and red like this picture's looking. You, you notice there's no whites in this picture. So I think that's what that's doing, which might be better to first start off that way to just look around. So if you see something turning white in the picture, you go, whoa, there's something that really is hot around 100 C because that's what I set it for. So that might help. And then once, once you feel good about things, then maybe let it automatically set the temperature range so you get better resolution in certain parts of the board. Maybe that's a good way to use it. I don't know. I mean, everybody's to their own, right? Now you see white. you probably catching on what I'm saying, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if I explained that very well. But, uh, yeah, if you set it up the other way how I had it, everything, there's only a few colors because everything, you know, if it was, I don't know what it was set for, and I don't know if I'm correct on that either, so I guess I should look into that and get back to you on another video because I'm going to be using this camera a lot. This seems such a nice camera. This thing still has its place, I guess. If I don't have my phone around and I'm sitting here at the bench and I just want to hurry and uh, look at something, I can just whip this up and pull it because it's all self-contained. Uh, but I really do like the resolution on this one. It's pretty crazy. Let me go through the specs real fast, okay? And also the cost. Now, uh, please use the links to per gear. Uh, I think you're going to see the better prices there. Uh, at least today, they have a, a sale price that's lower than Amazon's. So I think Amazon's showing this at three thirty nine, and I think per gear is like uh, I think three ten or something like that. I think it's like twenty dollars off. So uh, check it out. I'll put links for both per gear and Amazon down below. Uh, using the links helps support the channel. Uh, it's a small percentage I get. And it doesn't cost anything extra. It's just what they give me as a commission to 
you know, as a sales guy, right? Bringing on stuff. But I really do like these, uh, this thermal camera. So, man, I could totally recommend it. This guy right here, I mean, I bought this one. They didn't give, no one gave me this one. So I bought this and the price is around $379. Uh, right now it's 15% off at 321. So the sell, so these guys are pretty close to the same price right now. This guy, the A1, is 220 by 160. Okay, that's the infrared um, resolution, and that gives you 35,200 pixels. Okay, uh, this new infrared T2S Plus. This is the T2S Plus. This has 256 by 192. So compared to 220 by 160. So doesn't sound like a lot, right? But it has 49,000 pixels, 49,152 compared to 35,000. So yeah, you get another 14,000 pixels. You get like 50% more than, than that one, pretty much. So, you know, for about the same price. Now the benefit is on this one, there's no battery, there's no video, there's no screen, there's no electronics to drive a video and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just talking USB and the cameras, you know, or the phone's taking care of a lot of that stuff. So yeah, there's no battery in that. This thing only takes 300 milliwatts uh, maximum. So that's not very much power. It's less than a third of a watt. So that's pretty low power too. Uh, so it's not gonna wear down your camera too fast, you know, or your phone, I mean. Now, again, that's iOS. If you're getting one for an Android, make sure you get the Android one, not the iOS one. I think the price is the same. Now, besides the those pixels, okay, a couple of really important um, specs is the pixel pitch. Like, how small are they? Uh, 12 micrometers on on this guy, okay? This is 12 micrometers. I couldn't find that uh, spec on this one. Maybe it was in the manual. I was just looking online, but uh, I didn't see it. It seemed like I found that once before, so I think it is in their data sheet somewhere. I, I just couldn't find it. Um, this one's 60 millikelvins, uh, the new one, 60 millikelvins. So that, that means that's the, you know, how the resolution, you know, kind of like how many millivolts you could read. It's 60 millikelvins. I mean, that's pretty darn good. And again, on this one, I, I didn't find that spec. I thought I did. I don't see it. Darn. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. So those are two specs you want to look at to compare because, that gives you that thermal resolution. And then this this new one, this guy here, I mean, I'll put a link down below for, for this guy where I reviewed this because I was really impressed with this. Compared to the competition out there, I was, oh, I thought I saw something here. But anyway, compared to the resolution, or, you know, the, the I've looked at other, you know, cameras. I bought a FLIR. I bought it on sale, and it just wasn't as it wasn't near as good as I thought it was going to be. And God, it, it cost as much as, well, I think it cost more than these. It's on one of these last minute sales. And I only had a few minutes left before the sale was over. So I just, you know, it was one of those things where I just rushed and ordered it. Because I thought, wow, they're talking about double the accuracy of their old one. And I thought, wow, this is going to be so much better. Turned out not to be as good as this guy. So <laughs> there are some features on it that were kind of cool. You know, like this one has the... So, you know, it has the normal camera for the normal light spectrum. So it takes regular pictures and then it puts a regular picture on top of the thermal image so you can get that resolution. With this one, it's so good, you don't need that, I don't think. Uh, with the FLIR, the, the one I got, it was one that puts goes on your phone. And the way it worked, it had some kind of, you know, one of their techniques that they came up with. Kind of cool in a way, actually. But what it did is it kind of, it found the edges on in your picture, like anything that looked like it was a circle or a square or whatever, it found the lines and kind of put a contrast effect on that, if that makes any sense. So this, you know, you could kind of see the, the lines and stuff in the picture and it kind of made it look like better resolution, but it was just, in a way it was kind of gimmicky. It was almost like cartoonic, you know, like a cartoon that, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I think I did a, a review on that camera. 
Uh, I was going to keep it, and I I wanted to keep it just to compare with other cameras, but man, I spent so much money on stuff that I, I thought, guy, it's just not, it wasn't, it, I like this camera better, so I didn't want it. Now, these guys sent this to me for free, so I was like, okay, because I was done, I was happy with this one. So this one, I think if you get it, you're happy if you can find it on a good sale or something. And if you don't want something that's hooked to your phone. Now, let me just show you this real quick. Uh, you could totally take this off of this contraption, this jig here, okay? If you didn't want to hold it that way, you could uh, just use it this way and move it around your circuit and do it this way. So that way you'd have the freedom to move it where you want and stuff like that, but you'd have to hold two things. So that's not ideal, uh, but it doesn't put any stress on your cam or your phone really because it's just cord like your charging cable. But here, let me take this apart and kind of show you what the camera looks like. See, there's this little plastic jig this thing slid into, and then the cable slid down in this, which kept the thing rigid and strong. So, you know, if you didn't want to do that, you could hook it up this way, and you know, it's just a little smaller and all that kind of stuff, but you know, that's a little more delicate maybe. Or you could just take the cable off and stick it straight into your camera. And this thing sticks out far enough that I think it's it you probably want to leave your cover on because it actually lays up against camera and stabilizes it. Because I'm not sure if I took the cover off if it'd go all the way down or not, but it goes on far enough right there where you can use it that way, you know? And I'd probably want to flip it around so I could watch my, <laughs> I could watch my phone while I'm using that. But then your phones could be in the way, you know, if you're trying to get down inside some cavity you're, and you want to get, get over here. So I don't know. But anyway, you can use it that way too. So it might be a lot, whoa, look at that. Just went flying off. So maybe I should take off my cover. I think it went on all the way. Well, you know what? I'm not absolutely sure because you know what? Actually, it felt like it went in all the way, but the app's not popping up. So it's not in all the way. So I really need to take the cover off my phone for that to work. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, there we go. It snaps in. So, yeah, now it's all the way in. Okay. So you really, yeah, now the app came up. Okay. So, yes. It felt, you know, it actually felt like it was fitting on, but you saw how it just came off so easy. Now it's, now it's, it's on there. It's not going to come off. So yeah, so that's, that's a learning curve. I, I didn't realize that because I haven't used it that way yet, but there you go. So you could do it that way too, but that is the camera. But yeah, use one of the links. Uh, let me know uh, two thumbs up per gear for sending this out to me. Uh, they're not a manufacturer, it's infrared, okay? But they sell a lot of stuff. Uh, they're a distributor for some good companies like infrared. So I'm really happy with this camera. This is, I, well, you can tell. I'm just like, wow. I've been using thermal cameras for a while, and this one just blows me away. It's just, it's incredible. I mean, you saw the images. <laughs> I mean, it's really incredible. So... Uh, and the app is just really nice. I like all those features in the app. I'm going to play with it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to finish up this Class D. I might do another thermal test on the Class D. I, I, I should do 4 ohms. I was thinking about that. I need to really do 4 ohms. I've done 8 ohms max power, but now you should do 4 ohms. So maybe when I do that video, I'll do a quick thermal capture and I can tell you more about how that thing works. You know, if if that one setting works the way I think it does. So, <sighs> all right, guys. I'm hoping this one worked because I'll tell you what. I've got I've got a file, a folder of pictures and videos that's just stupid long. It's man, I should be fired from this job. <laughs> Holy cow, man! This just took me forever. Uh, you know, some bad things happening. You know, you guys have been watching the channel. I started this video before all that, and then I put it away. 
I brought it back out and I thought, okay, let's finish it up. And man, it's just been one technical de you know thing after another. So I did, I did a whole shoot and for some reason my camera setting focus thing was changed. Hopefully the focus worked on this one, but everything was out of focus. <laughs> so if this video is not that great, it's probably because I just got fed up and posted it. So sorry about that. I got to apologize to spend all your time and watch a crappy video. Let me know if it's a good video. Let me know if you liked, you know, the display over here and me talking through it instead of watching the back of me. And, and then I might have been more clumsy and might not have got as good a video. So I just thought maybe this would be a better way to do this type of video. Let me know what you guys think. <sighs> Time to sign off. Two thumbs up to my patrons. Uh, thank you for hitting the super thanks button down below. Please hit the like button if you liked it because this video, God, it was a pain in the bum. Uh, awesome camera though. And uh, it's an amazing contraption, right? That they sent. I mean, it's kind of a, I actually liked using it. I thought it was kind of funny when I put it together, but it was actually nice using it though. One hand, you know, so I could look at, yeah. Anyway, it was nice. So huh, I got some videos to show on this thing and hope you like the class T. Let me know if you want to see more videos of this because it's been in some. I'm going to stop talking, get off, and we will see you next time. Thank you.